Good day fellow investors, in yesterday's videos we discussed how the stock market is in a bubble and how one of the best approaches for a passive investor is to have an all-weather portfolio. And as, as promised, today we're going to discuss what is an all-weather portfolio, how you can think about building one, what are the key components and what are the key things to look at when doing such an all-weather portfolio. The key with an all-weather portfolio, it is that it is prepared for whatever can happen. So in the 40 years that Ray Dalio's all-weather portfolio has been backtested, it had, it had only six negative years and the average downturn in those negative years was about 2%. In 2008, all-weather portfolio from Ray Dalio lost just 3% while the stock market was down 30 something percent. However, it's a careful balance between risk and you have to constantly rebalance that portfolio every three, six months or once a year, however you feel uh, it's better for you. Let's start digging into it. I will not give you the exact uh, portfolio locations because that is personal and that depends on what you own, what you own otherwise. So that's something you really have to sit down and look at individual all positions you have, what is the risk there and how that real risk balances in an all-weather portfolio. I'll give you some tips on how to measure that risk at the end of the video. So let's start with what an all-weather portfolio is. The basis of an all-weather portfolio is that there can be four different economic environments and nobody knows what will happen with the economy and how long it will last. So you can have economic growth faster than expected and slower than expected and then in combination with inflation or without inflation. These are the four main environments that you can encounter when investing. The second thing to understand is that asset classes carry different returns and different risks. Inflation linked bonds, lowest risk, lowest return. And then if you go higher, you have equities, you have emerging markets equities, you have private equity with the highest volatility, but also the highest returns. However, if you adjust that for the risk, then every asset class gives you a return between four and 7%, which is not bad over the long term. The additional return within the all weather portfolio comes from the constant rebalancing. When something drops, you bring it back to the portfolio risk exposure. And then when it goes higher, it goes higher and you start selling. So in an all weather portfolio, by rebalancing, you buy low and sell high. And this gives you the extra additional return on those four to 7% that are calculated from a historical average. And then you reach seven, eight, nine, 10%. And the most important thing, you do it with less volatility, less risk, because your portfolio goes up slowly, while the other stock markets might go up, might go down, the environment might change, interest rates might, might increase for the next 10, 20 years, and then stocks and other assets would do very, very bad, but you would do good because you were let's say, in an all-weather portfolio. Let's dig deeper. The key is to position yourself, your portfolio, in a way that whatever happens, as some assets in the portfolio will move in opposite ways, you get ahead year by year and you grasp that return that gets comes from volatility and from the assets' uh, normal natural returns in the form of dividends. It's crucial to allocate 25% of your portfolio risk to each of the four economic environments. So in an environment of growth and rising inflation, you have equities, which will do well, commodities, corporate credit, emerging market credit. So you allocate 25% of your portfolio risk, I'll explain what that is, towards one of each, these four quadrants. Commodities, commodities, inflation linked, bonds, emerging market credit equities and then you balance around to see okay if this happens in the economy if that happens in the economy i'm protected let's talk about risk allocation for example if i look at us equities the risks are high thus if 50 percent of the portfolio is in us equities and let's say those can fa fall 50 percent then 20 percent five percent of my portfolio downside is in equities if the other part of my portfolio are in bonds, let's say 50% is in short term bonds, where the risk is practically zero, then 100% of my risk is into equities. So 50% bond, 50% stocks 
portfolio allocation means that 95% is in stock risk and 5% is only in bond risk. And that's something you have to think about when allocating your portfolio. If you want to increase your risk in holding bonds, you increase the maturity of those bonds. The longer are the bonds that you're holding, the higher is the risk in case that interest rates go much higher or that inflation comes. You can protect yourself by, in, by that by buying inflation-linked bonds, but that's again a different story. Let's see how rebalancing is important. This is the 30-year treasury constant maturity rate, and you can see how over the last 10 years, bond values, especially 30-year bonds, have gone significantly up. They didn't do that good in the last two years as interest rates went up, but over the long term, and look at the volatility, look at how many opportunities to rebalance you would have had, where you have, would have sold a lot in 2012, bought more in 2014, sold in 2015, bought a little bit more in 2015, sold a lot in 2016, and now you would be buying a little bit more as the portfolio exposure lowers. So it's all about rebalancing. Now, if we look at Dalio's, what Dalio had to say in his interview with Tony Robbins about five years ago, this is his allocation in percentages. He usually doesn't like to do this because it fluctuates and it focused on risk, not on portfolio allocation. And that's something also that makes this difficult, but if you sit down, you can get out a nice all weather portfolios for you. So he was saying 30% stocks, 15% intermediate bonds, 40% long-term bonds, gold, and 7.5% commodities to have a proper all weather portfolio. Keep in mind that from 2013, long-term US bonds did really, really well. There was a lot of rebalancing. Stocks did really well. Gold did not do that good. Commodities, a little bit less. And so that would be a lot of rebalancing for you that would give you great yields. 10-year treasury constant maturity rate, five years, it went down, but then it returned to where it was. Gold was extremely volatile, so a lot of rebalancing there. Commodities also volatile straight down up to February 2016 and then up. So if you want an all-weather portfolio, sit down, look at what you have, take the possibilities, investment possibilities behind me and then put them, okay, what happens, what happens to my portfolio if this happens and how much am I exposed there with risk? What is the counterpart? So if there is inflation, interest rates go higher, let's say stocks go down, let's say bonds go down, do I have inflation protection from gold, from commodities and from inflation protected treasuries? And then you see, okay, how do I balance that depending on what is your target when it comes to investing? How much will I have in stocks? How much will I have in emerging market stocks, etc., etc. I'm not that focused on an all-weather portfolio. I like the all-weather um, approach, but I'm more, okay, I will buy great businesses across the world, so I'm more inclined to Buffett, and I will have the all-weather hedge. I will have gold miners in my portfolio, so if there is inflation, I'm protected. And I will, in about in the next few months, I will be looking at puts to protect a little bit more my portfolio so that it allows me to go a little bit more long. So that whatever happens, I am well protected there. And I will have, of course, commodity stocks that I rebalance constantly. I invest in emerging markets, so... That's what I do. And as Dalio said, if you are passive, stick to a, a pattern, stick to portfolio allocations, just rebalance constantly over time and you will do good over time. If you are a very aggressive investor like I am, then you can really, okay, where there is trouble, where there is pain, and then you buy when there is blood on the streets. I recently bought something in Argentina in August and sold already a few weeks ago for a 50% gain because I could have taken the volatility and I like the volatility and value investors take advantage of the volatility. So just an introduction into an all-weather portfolio. I'm really sorry, but it would take me 
a lot of time to sit down and really go in detail how to place how to make an all weather portfolio and that's something that i'm not doing for myself because i'm looking at different things as I said i'm looking at great businesses that will do good no matter what and i can rebalance around that no matter what happens in the economy so i'm not really an all weather investor i take the best parts of the all weather investor and i'm more inclined to buff it and buying great businesses at a great price i hope i helped you a little bit a little bit more if you want to dig deeper into the all weather portfolio ask questions in the comment section and try to position yourself accordingly and then the most important thing is sticking to it you really have okay bonds are going down i'm buying more stocks are going up i'm selling uh, gold is going down i'm buying more gold is going up i'm selling and that's something very hard to do and that's why ray dalio is ray dalio and an all weather portfolio is not that applied in general few people i have heard about have an all weather portfolio Thank you for watching, looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow about Tencent and then also another video from Ray Dalio which discusses how money is created and how money disappears on Monday.